Stephen Mosley. Thank you, Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and it's uh, a pleasure to be able to speak in this year's budget debate. It's a special pleasure to speak after the uh, uh, Honourable Member for Penistone and Stocksbridge, who spoke with such expertise, knowledge and, uh, and passion on the future of energy intensive industries. And I'm delighted to hear that she welcomes the thrust of what the Chancellor is proposing in his budget. I just wish that all Labour members had the same sort of attitude, because I do think that some of them forget what it was like four years ago when this country really was on its knees. Our families were being squeezed by high unemployment and falling wages. Our high streets had been devastated by the biggest dip in consumer spending in a generation, and our, local, our, our young people found that they had the will and the passion to succeed, but not the opportunities. Well, what a difference four years can make. Today, unemployment is down across the country. In Chester, it has fallen from 3.5% at the time of the last general election to just 2.2% now. Our small businesses are reviving. Locally, we've seen new business startups up by 300%. And our young people are starting to get their hope back. In Chester, youth unemployment has fallen from 610 in 2009 to just 295 today. It's more than halved. We've seen a record number of apprenticeships, with 870 being created in Chester in the past year alone, which is three times as many as were being created under the last government. People know what they get with a Conservative-led government. More jobs, great opportunities, and a better future for our country and its people. And it's not just in this place that we're helping hard-working people. I will give way. The Honourable Member is so confident that things are so much better under this Government. Can he explain why, in my constituency, the claimant count for those over the age of 25 has gone from 185 in May 2010 to 450 uh, the last month? And for young people, it's gone from 100 in May 2010 to 145 and peaked at 205 in March last year. I would hope that the, the Honourable Lady stands up, champions her constituency and goes out to employers and investors and say, look, this is what we have to offer. Come and invest here. Come and create jobs here. Come and employ people here. We want you. My constituency is great. Chester's great. I want to sell it the whole time. We have jobs fairs, business fairs. We get the investment. We get the jobs. And I'm proud of that. But it's not just here that we're doing a good job. Because up and down the country, in town and city halls, Conservative councillors are freezing and in some cases cutting council tax whilst protecting frontline services. My local Conservative-run Cheshire Western Chester Council is doing all it can to help my constituents and they are freezing council tax for the next two years. Over the five years of this Parliament, Council taxpayers in Chester will have seen just a 1.65% rise in their council tax bill, which of course compares in massively favourably with the last government when council tax bills more than doubled. This means that in Chester, Band D council taxpayers are £131 a year better off. And it's this government which has given my local council the funds to freeze council tax. But they also know that they have to do more than always just look to central government for more money. They know that the way to improve local services is to make them more efficient. And that's why they are now sharing their backroom services with other local authorities. A recent deal with Labour-run Wirral Borough Council will see council taxpayers in, Chesh in West Cheshire and in Wirral saving some £69 million. Management costs have been cut by 33%, saving taxpayers 3.2 million, and at the same time they're improving local services, as can be seen with the Council's fostering and ad adoption services. Working with two more Labour councils, Holton and Knowlesley, they are sharing expertise, experience and costs to improve services offered to children. Adoption figures are now the best in the North West and the time taken to place children 
is half the national average. By making local services more efficient, they are making them more effective as well. And they're using these savings to keep taxes low and to invest in our residents and in Chester's future. One example of that is that in Chester, work is currently progressing on a new £37.5 million theatre, replacing the old Gateway Theatre that was shamefully closed by Labour in 2007. I was therefore delighted to hear the additional support that the Chancellor announced for regional theatre in his budget on Wednesday. Cheshire West and Chester will be knocking on his door. I was also delighted to hear about the new £20 million uh, fund to support our cathedrals in this anniversary year of the start of the First World War. <laughs> Chester Cathedral stands at the heart of our beautiful city, recently voted by American readers of USA Today as the fifth prettiest city in Europe. The cathedral hosts memorials and a memorial garden to the Cheshire Regiment, 8,420 of whose soldiers died serving our country between 1914 and 1918. On the 5th of April, a new tourist attraction, Cathedral at Heights, will open, allowing people to climb to the top of the Cathedral Tower and offering panoramic views across the city and of the inside of the Cathedral. The Cathedral has got massive plans to boost the Chester Visitor offering, and I know that they will be keen to explore the opportunities that this new money provides. Madam Deputy Speaker, as we reflect on the Chancellor's Budget, let's look at the reality for my constituents. A four-year transformation of our country's economy that has delivered more jobs, better services and a council tax freeze. Every step of the way, the Labour Party has opposed our long-term economic plan that is making this possible. So what a clear choice for the people of Britain. More borrowing more taxes, more debt from the Labour Party, or more pounds in their pockets with the Conservatives. Bring on the election. <laughs> Alan White.